Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do a quick video today um, about my homemade um, trail rations or camping food, whatever you want to call it. Um, now you may have seen a few of my other videos on dehydrating, um, I've done some dehydrating of fruit, vegetables and also making my own biltong, um, some of which I have here. Um, and really it was just a very quick video to show you kind of how I would pack this and use this. Um, when I'm out and about, um, whether I'm going on sort of an overnight trip or a couple of nights or whatever it may be. Um, and just very quickly, um, inside this bowl, hopefully you can see there, I have got the, some of the biltong that I made uh, in a video a short while ago. Um, I've chopped it up into sort of bite-sized pieces. Um, and then here in these kilner jars, um, I've got some dehydrated leeks, some garlic, some onion, uh, some sweet corn and some carrots. Um, and now what I would usually do, um, I would make these or use these as part of sort of a one pot meal. Um, now when I'm out camping, um, I, I don't want to take a huge amount of cooking equipment with me. Um, ideally I've got a titanium mug um, and I've got a titanium plate which doubles up as a frying pan. Um, and for me, ideally, once I've set up my camp and I've got my little fire going, um, you know, I can use the pot um, to either make uh, hot water for tea and coffee and things like that. Um, alternatively, I can cook in there as well and I can make something like a stew or I can heat up um, like, you know, something like a tin soup um, or a packet soup or, or you know, some rice or whatever. Um, and what I find is that because this has all been dehydrated, it takes up a lot less space than it normally would do. Um, and what I would do, if I was going out for an overnighter, I'll take one of these little Ziploc bags here, and I think this is about um, five inches by three and a half, something like that. Um, and what I would do, simply just open it up and just dump in various bits of this dehydrated food. So I'll put probably quite a good portion of the dehydrated beef in there. Hopefully you can see there. Now this, this stuff is deceptive because once you rehydrate it, um, it will double if not triple in size. Um, one of the problems I find with biltong whenever I make it is obviously it shrinks down when it's ready um, and you'll sit there and I'll stuff my face with biltong and about an hour later once it's been sitting in my stomach in, in the, uh, the, you know, the acids and whatever that's in there it will rehydrate in my stomach and it's only then that I'll realise I've eaten the equivalent of about two big steaks worth of biltong. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're packing this stuff. Um, and then really it's just Whatever your taste may be in terms of um, vegetables and things, you know, I would take probably a small, small handful of the leeks. A good pinch of the garlic. A large, probably quite a large pinch of the onion. So again, you can sort of see this is all filling up now. The sweet corn, I actually worked this out after a couple of different trips. Um, and what you want is sort of a fairly heat, and I'll show you this before I drop it in, uh, but you just kind of want a fairly heaped um, tablespoon and that's a good amount for a, a decent kind of stew. And then with the carrots, sort of likewise, just a really good pinch of them, like so. Um, and I must admit, when I've taken people out camping with me, um, I've, I've taken these along for everybody because they're nice and simple and easy. They weigh absolutely nothing. Um, and they, they fit in your pack nice and easily. Now with this, um, you know, people will look at it and go, oh really, uh, there's hardly anything in there, you know, how's that gonna sustain us during a night out or whatever? Um, and the, the short answer is you'd be surprised. Um, this is a really, really filling meal. You stick this in a, a pot with maybe between 500 and 700 mils of water. What I'd usually do is when I get to my camp while I'm setting up, I'll put this into a pot um, if, especially if I've got a spare pot that I'm not using um, for maybe brewing coffee in between. You don't have to do it, um, but I'll dump it in there, I'll stick some cold water in with it, put the lid on, and just leave it there for a couple of hours, and everything will begin to rehydrate. It rehydrates better when the water's warm, um, so obviously uh, maybe an hour, half an hour to an hour before uh, we want to eat, 
I'll just put the pot on the uh, on the embers. That will then start to boil and heat the water. As long as you give it a good stir every now and again, so nothing sticks to the bottom, um, you get a really, really filling meal. Um, if you're someone who, who's got a really big appetite, I would probably recommend throwing in either a handful of sort of small pasta bits um, or, or even a small handful of rice to bulk this out a little bit. Um, I have done that on occasion. Um, but this is basically what I would do if I was going to go out for just a night out. So I would make this up either the, mor uh, the, the morning I, I'm leaving um, or usually the night before because I, I don't like messing around too much in the mornings. Um, and that's basically what I'll take with me. If I was going for longer than that, if I was going out for three, four, five, six nights, whatever, um, I would probably use this, um, which is my vacuum sealing machine. Now I bought this online, um, I think it cost me about 30 quid. Uh, maker for this one is JML, um, there's plenty of others on the market. Um, and what I tend to buy, rather than the, uh, the individual bags you can get, I actually buy the bags on a roll. Um, and what you will do, you put the end of this in your machine, press the seal button and it will create a, um, a sort of a heat seal straight across the end of the bag. Um, this is one that I made earlier on this morning, so you can just about see that line that's running along about sort of quarter inch in, um, that is the seal, uh, the actual seal. So you can see I can't put my hand through there, it's nicely sealed. When you put your stuff inside and then you put it in the machine, it will suck out all the air and then create another seal across the top as well. Um, now, these particular bags, um, I've played around with these a lot, um, and you can get different um, types and styles, um, different sizes. Um, I always err on the side of caution and make one a little bit larger like this, um, because I've cut them thinking, oh yeah, I should just be able to fit everything in, and then you find out you can't actually get it into the sealing machine. Uh, but if I was going out for a longer trip, or, or even if I just want to make these up in anticipation for, for going away, maybe I'm, I've you know, got a load of vegetables out the garden and I'm dehydrating them and thinking, right, what can I do with these? This is another way to try to sort of store them. Um, so you can see there, I've got a nice layer on the bottom. Um, what I, one, one thing you can do with this um, is you can also put some seasonings in the bag with it. Um, so if you, you know, got a thing for salt and pepper, um, any kind of herbs, um, even things like gravy granules, um, which I usually put in um, to something like this, work really, really well. And it just means everything you need for your, your stew uh, is already there waiting in the bag. So all you do is you cut the top off, you dump the whole thing into your pot, it's pre-seasoned, um, and all you've got to do is rehydrate it, warm it up, and, and there you go. Um, but just very, very quickly, I'll, uh, I'll move the camera over a little bit. Let's see if I can get this all in shot. And there we go, there's the food sealer. And all you do is you lift this up like so, you take your bag, you put it into the, the halfway point, you close it down. Now this one works slightly different to others I've used. Um, you've got a, a vacuum and seal button. Um, for some reason the seal doesn't work on this one, I, I, maybe it was damaged by me, probably was. Um, so what you do is you press vacuum seal, it sucks all the air out, it should then automatically seal it, but it doesn't. So what I have to do is just press the seal only button um, once the air has been sucked out. Um, but I'll give you a quick demo of how this works. Hopefully you can see the, uh, the bag there. I just want to make sure you can see what happens to this. So what it's done, hopefully you can see that there, it's kind of like the sort of thing you'd buy in a supermarket if you were buying um, you know, vacuum sealed meat or something like that. Um, so it's completely sucked all of the air out of this whatsoever. Um, it's got a nice solid seal across the top here, so that's now a heat, heat seal. So that's not going to come undone until I take a knife or a pair of scissors and cut across here. Um, and again, this weighs absolutely nothing. Um, the reason I make these bags slightly larger is that you obviously have to tuck that in here and then be able to close the top. And what I've done before, I've made them sort of basically this, hopefully you can see that there, this kind of width. 
Um, and what will happen is that you then, if I fold this over, imagine this, uh, this top piece isn't here, you then can't actually shut this because the stuff you're trying to vacuum seal is in the way of the lid. Um, it's just something to think about if you are doing this yourself. Um, but again, I can make up several of these, um, you know, whether it's um, you know, one a day for several days for me, or if, we, if I'm going away for a single night and there's three or four of us, I can throw a load of these in there um, and you know, it, it works really, really well. Okay guys, well I hope that was useful. As I say, these are really, really good meals. Um, if, you, if you don't like um, you know, carrying lots of heavy food with you or you want to try something a little bit different, um, you know, these are, depending on how you season them and what, what uh, ingredients you're putting in, these can be really, really good filling and, and good tasting meals. Um, you know, there are a lot of things on the market. You've got uh, boil in the bag meals, you've got dehydrated meals. There, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can get for camping and I, 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 I've tried and used all of them um, and I, I, I continue to use them. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, slagging them off. I don't, I'm not saying they're no good because they, they certainly are. Um, but if you want to make your own, um, this is, in my opinion, probably the way to do it. Um, I also make... Um, wet meals in here as well. Um, I normally tend to do a kind of all day breakfast thing, um, which I'll probably do another video on at some point, but in, in very simple terms, you, you fry up some, some sausage and some bacon, um, some scrambled eggs, get some baked beans, um, let that all cool, mix it all together, you dump it in a bag like this. Um, I normally pop it in the freezer for about half an hour just so it, it doesn't have to be frozen solid but it just needs to go tacky. Um, you can then put that into the dehydrator machine, uh, sorry, the, um, the sealing machine, vacuum machine, and what it will do, as it sucks all the air out, um, because the, the liquid side of it, any of the grease and the fat from the bacon and the sausage, any moisture from the egg or, or the juice from the beans, um, because it's kind of half frozen, it won't get sucked out and into the machine, which obviously you wouldn't want to happen. Um, and you can then seal it exactly the same as this. Um, and again, if I'm going for a single night, I'll leave it as it is like that. If I'm going for several nights, what I'll normally do is put them back in the freezer, let them completely solidify, um, wrap that in something like tin foil, put it in the bottom of my pack. Um, I'll take one out each evening that I'm away. Um, I found that I can normally keep them frozen or at least semi-frozen, wrapped in tin foil that way, for at least two to three days, um, depending on your weather conditions and obviously what time of the year you're doing it, um, maybe even longer. But the height of summer, um, I've had one that was uh, still frozen by sort of the afternoon of the third day. So I've had one the first day, one the second day. Third day, it, just, it wasn't completely frozen, I'll be honest, but you know there was still some solid parts of it in there. Um, and, and the point I'm trying to make is that you know it keeps it nice and preserved. Because the air has been taken out, um, things shouldn't go bad, they shouldn't go off. Um, but obviously you know, keeping them frozen just preserves them that little bit longer. Uh, but again guys, hope it was useful, comments and questions in the box below, um, please hit like and subscribe if you would like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.